For years now, Tesla has been working to put itself in position to deal with what is happening right now better than any other automaker in the West. Here is why Tesla's years of battery technology investments are becoming a buffer against Nikola's rising costs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you all today. Hope you're all having an awesome day, all you 63,000 smiling faces. You know, in spite of the war in Ukraine, you know, the Russia-Ukraine thing, I think really, if we just ignore that, just pretend that's not happening, this year has been really an amazing year. I mean, we've had a couple of tough years with COVID and with lockdowns, and especially here in Victoria, I think we were the most locked down state in the world, period. Insane. And that felt pretty difficult. I really didn't enjoy that. My boys and I, though, did just go to the local BMX track almost every day. So we tried to make the best of it. But this year's been a great year. And it's been a great year for electric vehicle sales so far already. Many companies are breaking records. We're seeing battery factories, gigafactories being built at lightning speed. Billions and billions and billions of dollars being invested into future battery technology. What is that going to do? It's going to bring down the cost of batteries. Yes, I know we will have bumps and spikes and troughs and peaks and all those kinds of things. But overall, energy density will improve significantly this decade. As I just shared with you in a video about the recent energy density improvements at CATL, at, at BYD, and at a num number of other companies. I mean, Goshen High Tech, look at the batteries they're working on, LFE batteries, amazing. Some of the solid state batteries we're seeing coming to life now, semi-solid state batteries. This is gonna result in cheaper prices for all of us, better energy density, better products, and it's gonna get everyone off dinosaur juice. That's the key goal. Now, Tesla and BYD, but let's just talk about Tesla for the moment, has put themselves in position over the last decade, made a number of different structural moves to enable them to play chess when others are playing checkers, to enable them to outsmart legacy auto. And honestly, I am truly baffled as to why they're not being copied. Yes, 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 I know a number of Chinese automakers are copying them, and that should, it's a smart move. Don't criticize the Chinese for copying them. They should be applauded for being humble enough to recognize when someone else is doing something that's better and just simply adopt that process. Why AC Auto doesn't do that? I don't know. Maybe they're too slow. It's too hard, too much bureaucracy. I don't know. But clearly, the structural moves, the intelligent moves Tesla has made over the past five years, in particular over the past 12 months, are putting the company in a position to deal with this current situation better than any other legacy auto or any other car company outside of China, period. And I don't mean better by a small margin. I mean better by a large margin. For years now, Tesla has invested heavily in its supply chain and battery strategy. So focused was the company in these things, in these areas, it even decided to design and produce its own batteries, 4680 cells. The next generation cells are a crucial component of Tesla's long-term plan to make electric vehicles more affordable. Now, in terms of making electric vehicles more affordable, I don't believe 4680 battery cells are the key component to doing that. They will make premium vehicles more affordable, but the average vehicle for the average man to own, won't, 4680 cells won't drastically affect, not overly, the cost, the end cost to the person buying that vehicle. I mean, they will for premium cars, like I said. LFP batteries clearly will though. Elon Musk has been very open about Tesla's need for nickel and its need to diversify by not only manufacturing its own batteries, getting multiple manufacturers to manufacture its own batteries, unlike obviously GM, Ford, and other car companies who are just getting one manufacturer to do it and then whining and crying when that one manufacturer can't meet their demands or expectations. That's exactly what they've been doing blaming them rather than taking personal responsibility for their own personal decisions to only have one manufacturer. But they've also been saying to everyone, you know what, everyone, supply us, everyone, literally everyone, signing contracts left, right, and center, signing massive forward dated contracts where they sign up for a price now to receive supply in multiple years at a certain price. That is a strategy Legacy Auto have made a mistake on by not following. Being a key component of high-performance batteries, though, Musk stated back in 2020 that any company that can provide Tesla with environmentally friendly nickel would be granted a massive contract. So he said that two years ago. 
Any company that can supply us with nickel will be given a massive contract, right? During battery day, the CEO also highlighted that Tesla's nickel-based 4680 cells would be part of the heart of the company's flagship products, like the Cybertruck. But while nickel is a critical ingredient of lithium iron batteries, experts have predicted an upcoming shortage for quite a while now. This is not news. This is something that all car companies should have been aware was coming. Norway-based energy analytics from Rystad Energy estimated, say teslarati.com, that demand would surpass nickel supply by around 2024. And by 2026, there might be a shortage of the material. This time frame has been accelerated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And it's also been accelerated not by that. That's actually a secondary component, believe it or not. Many people would tell you otherwise because they just react to situations that are happening right now. So it's like a momentary bias caused by the reaction to the moment of what's happening now. But the truth is that the nickel shortage has been a result of ramping up of battery plants at a far faster rate and battery production at a far faster rate than the entire industry predicted. Well, why didn't they ask Elon two years ago? Why didn't they say, well, Elon, two years ago, why do you think this is going to happen? Tell us more. I mean, that's why Herbert Deese is a very, very smart person. He's not walking around saying, I'm the smartest man in the world. He's saying, Elon, come, come and talk to me. I'll learn from you. He's showing humility. He learns from Elon and he goes, thank you very much. And we'll make this decision, this decision, this decision. Of course, Volkswagen's still in a very tough situation, but obviously he's doing his best to transform that company. Now, it should be noted that Russia controls 20% of the supply of the industry's highest grade nickel. The country also holds 10% of the world's overall nickel supply. Thus, when Russia was hit by sanctions due to its invasion of Ukraine, markets reacted and this accelerated what was already happening. Nickel prices rose so much that the London Metal Exchange cancelled trading for the material for more than a week. In a statement to Insider, auto industry analyst Lauren Fix noted that Russia's control of nickel could have adverse effects for electric vehicle manufacturers. Relying on your enemies to supply you with critical materials is never to your benefit. They have the ability to control the price you pay and can make it more difficult for you to gain supply to meet your goals, Fix said. Now, I don't personally think it's a smart strategy to call your enemies. I think um, let them believe they're your friends, even if you think they're your enemies. That's probably a wiser way to look at that. But publicly saying they're our enemies, they're just going to say, okay, raise the price on those guys. Anyway, Tesla is the market's dominant electric vehicle manufacturer. And for good reason. For years, the company has initiated plans to be immune as possible from market shifts. However, they haven't done that by simply trying to get more supply. They've done that by recognizing what China has seen for some time now and what baffles me as to why the West is still not aware of it, which is that nickel-based batteries are not the battery chemistry of the future. The battery chemistries of the future have nothing to do with nickel. In fact, they will rely on LFP chemistries and sodium-based batteries. That's the only solution to the world's needs. We cannot build enough batteries if we just relied, focused on those being nickel-based batteries or cobalt-based batteries. That just won't work. We don't have the supply. It's not going to happen. It's too expensive. However, LFP and sodium, with those two together, they're both very affordable, very cheap. CATL has a sodium battery that costs 30% less than LFP batteries. Eventually, they say, when they ramp up, it will cost 30% less. And sodium is abundant, one of the most abundant minerals on the face of the planet. Now, for years, Tesla has initiated plans to be as immune as possible to market shifts. Tesla actually built up a nickel supply practically independent of many market shifts by tapping into partnerships with nickel mining companies and nickel production entities. The company even bought into a nickel mine in early 2021, providing itself with direct access to nickel. Then, in addition to that, what do they do? They pivot to LFP. They sign massive supply contracts for LFP from CATL. In addition, months ago, Tesla also signed a supply contract for LFP batteries from BYD. In addition, as we can see for our Shenzhen stock exchange filing, it's likely that Tesla actually signed a contract for 200 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries per year when Goshan High Tech had just signed an agreement with Volkswagen, their largest shareholder, that Volkswagen would have no say on the company's decisions, giving them the ability to sign this massive contract. Now, Tesla's worked heavily on battery technology as well. From the 2170 cells currently being made in Gigafactory Nevada with Panasonic to the 4680 cells that are currently being ramped in the company's Cato Road facility. Many of you might say, well, 2170 cells, that's just a proprietary cell from Panasonic. That's not true. There is a proprietary chemistry that Tesla worked on 
to make those batteries more efficient, more affordable. Tesla's 4680 batteries were announced as nickel-based cells, right? Though they feature a number of efficiencies that make their production more cost-effective and their life cycle compared to other traditional batteries significantly longer. However, a non-scarcity mindset. Companies that have a scarcity mindset often struggle. However, Tesla's doing the opposite. They're actually not keeping their cell technology to themselves, 4680s. In a previous announcement, Panasonic confirmed that it would be producing 4680 batteries, and they have already been validated by the electric vehicle maker. Panasonic has noted that mass production of the next generation cells will begin around 2024, and they may not necessarily only be for Tesla. Tesla also managed to handle the rising cost of nickel by using batteries that do not use the material at all, as we already talked about. They actually started focusing on LFP batteries in their vehicles a long time ago now. And the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive and the Model Y rear-wheel drive, both are manufactured in Gigafactory Shanghai, use LFP. Now, another pivot Tesla has made is to use manganese. They also mentioned they've begun using manganese for some of their batteries to help reduce costs and reliance on nickel by using manganese that can significantly reduce the amount of nickel they need to use in their batteries. Lastly, Tesla launched a recycling program for its nickel-based batteries, which will help the company supply in future. Now, I think more important than any of this, though, is what I keep going on about with LFP. And the key here is Elon Musk's tweet last year when he said, when asked what the battery chemistry of the future is, LFP. Now, generally, if 80% of your product uses a different chemistry, you're not going to say LFP, are you? You're going to say something, you're going to say, oh, no, 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 no. The, the, the chemistry we will be the future is the one we use right now. But instead of doing that, he just gave a totally honest answer. He said, LFP. What does that tell you about the likely contracts Tesla has signed with CATL, BYD, Gushon High Tech, potentially even other battery manufacturers of LFP into the future? Very likely those contracts were signed well in advance to any future price shifts. That said, obviously Tesla is still affected by the market, but Tesla's forward-looking strategy will position them to be able to handle those market shifts much, much better than any other legacy auto company. Ten Wong, a tech investor and founder of Connectpreneur, shared his thoughts on this. Pre-war, nickel prices and potential shortages were a huge concern of Elon's and the EV industry as a whole. The war will exacerbate those dynamics which will result in higher prices and slower deliveries for EVs. As for Tesla, they are the market leader right now. So the nickel situation may actually help them versus competitors in the short term. Tesla's plan is to sell 20 million EVs in 2030. That is exceptionally ambitious, seeing as they didn't even hit 1 million last year. They were close. I think it was about 930,000. But that's a 20x 20 times last year's deliveries. How will Tesla 20x their last year, 2021 deliveries? There's only one way. Sign massive battery contracts, build out massive battery plants, and invest billions of dollars into battery cell production and battery cell R&D innovation. Whether you believe it or not, that's currently what Tesla are doing. You just don't see it all or hear about it all. So sometimes we just don't realize what's really going on. Like I've said before, Tesla is playing chess. The others, mostly, are playing checkers.